I am Silas Jackson of Spike Week. I am going to be joined by B. Kurt to draft a $20 Drafters Million Two NFL Best Ball Championship team. B. Kurt knows a heck of a lot more than I do. I'm pretty much a rookie, um, so we're going to have some stumbling along the way. B. Kurt, how's it going? Man, it's a great day to be here. It's going to be fun to draft on drafters. Uh, how many drafters drafts have you done so far? All right. So this will be my 10th draft in the $20. I'm really trying to get those promos this month. I've been kind of waiting for August because I knew they were going to have the big promo month. But I have, I think, about 38 in the pre-draft best ball and about 35 in the $3 contest that's open right now so i'm like roughly in like 85 90 somewhere in that ballpark total perfect uh it does look like the draft filled which is fantastic we drew the six spot um you know i, I personally have not done any drafters this year i did a, a couple last year because there was going to be some overlay um how, how are we looking in terms of fill percentage um for this year so I've listened to a couple of people I think are smart, and I think this tournament, the $20 is going to come at about 70% to 75% full, which in our terms means instead of 17% of teams getting paid out, it's going to be more like 25% of teams getting paid out, which when we're talking about 300 k up top, $2 million in total, like that can be a good chunk of money that you're just getting bonuses on. Yeah, I mean, you don't even need to come in first. I mean, up to 10th is 12K. Um, pretty flat up top, where 50,000 to fifth. Um, mm -hmm. It's a pretty relatively nice price or price structure. Um, it's just something I haven't personally dived into. Yeah. We are on the clock. Who are you looking at? Yes, we are. So I have been just been still taking Cooper Cup. Not scared. What about you? 100% think he's ready for week one. Um, it's the preseason. They don't really need him. Uh, make sure he's healthy. And I mean, he, he could have another historic season. Yeah, let's lock that in. Uh, which kind of brings us to a good point. How are you looking at it in terms of like it being different compared to BBM and DraftKings? So the biggest difference is just the overall contest structure without having playoff weeks, but I'm also focusing a bit more on what my opponents are doing, not just in this isolated singular draft room, but overall. So I actually always draft with opponent IQ up when I'm drafting on drafters. So I can see what builds are the most common, what players go in what specific builds. Like one thing I came across the other day when I started with Jamar Chase. So Jamar Chase in my drafts, is only in two tight end builds 24% of the time. So 76% of the time, it's three or more tight ends with Jamar Chase. So in a contest where we value uniqueness, maybe a little bit more than the DraftKings in the BBM, little micro edges like that are like, hey, maybe I try to work in two tight end builds with Jamar Chase or things like that. That's just one specific one I have off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. But like little things like that, I think can go a long way in this contest. Yeah, I mean, if you if you can grab the right tight end or two tight ends that, um, you know, kind of overperform based on ADP, you know, it gives you a significant edge because you might have a wide receiver that helps out in a couple given weeks um, yeah, that they um, might not have had. One of the guys I was also researching was Luke Musgrave. Just, you know, there's camp hype. Why not check mm -hmm. him out? So on my drafts on drafters, he's only going in two tight end builds 10% of the time. So like, what does a Jamar chase with a Luke Musgrave in a two tight end build look like? Like, those are the weird things I'm thinking through in this competition where I would not care to think through in those other competitions. And some might even say that's a little bit micro here, but like, what else am I going to do? It's August. Absolutely. So we're going to, we're going to pick, and then I have another question to follow up with. Um, I really like Olave here. Um, I really like Olave. Could also get behind Derrick Henry or Mahomes. What about your guy, Devonta Adams? I don't see Devonta Adams. You mean Devonta Excuse Smith? Excuse me, Devonta Smith. Yeah, no, Devonta Smith's fine. Um, he's going to have his spike weeks and is 
I mean, I talked about it earlier. He's basically the 1A, 1B to A.J. Brown. He's going to be on a good offense that we know is going to score a crap ton of points. So he should consistently find our lineup. And the reason why I'm probably player take personal Olave over Devonta Smith. I see Olave go with Cup a lot more often. Okay. So I think there's a little bit of added uniqueness there. But also there wasn't any quarterbacks off the board yet. So getting that potential for pushing Hurts around the corner, probably not going to happen, but like I don't mind playing my cards that way. Yeah, totally. Um, so the question I was going to ask, what are the typical build structures that people are you know, kind of um, leaning towards uh, in drafters? Um, so the three, six, eight, three – is being drafted 37% of times. The next highest build structure is 11%. <laughs> so three, six, eight, three is like- So people are building very flat. Every other combination. They're yeah, playing they're safe. Kind of, yeah, playing safe, kind of a flat kind of structure, make sure that they have enough points everywhere else. Where I feel like in this type of tournament, you kind of want to play for last or first. Like you don't want to min cash. So- you know, kind of try and push your edges, um, you know, similar to what you're trying to do in BBM and DK in that way. Um, obviously, the difference is you need to combine all of your scores and you're playing up against everyone. And I lost my this train of thought on where the butt is. <laughs> That's all right. Well, probably because you're getting excited, we might pull up Jalen Hurts Oh, we're here. getting Jalen Hurts here. This is easy. Yeah. Now, riddle me this, Silas. What do you think about a one QB build? I mean, I don't really know drafters, right? So my guess is Hertz is probably in two or three QB builds, probably what, 98, 99% of the time. So we could get yeah. different in that regard. However, you really need Hertz to pay off at ADP. Um, he needs to kind of be that QB one for us to actually win 300K in this format if we only go with one quarterback. Yeah. And maybe we'll do it. I might lean us towards it. I think the only person out there really drafting one QBs consistently is a guy in the Spike Week Discord named Shuby. He has like a hundred of these babies on drafters already. And every time I look at him, I go, man, that's a sick build. So like, I want to work a couple more into my portfolio. But like, if we get a huge Matthew Stafford slide or something else makes sense, we'll take it. But well, I'm not opposed. If we're looking at Stafford, I might actually push us away from it. Um, just because I think bye weeks matter just a, a little bit more uh, in this contest, right? Because you want to, you, you are going cumulative points. So both Hertz and Stafford at, at bye week ten, um, we're really not going to be piggybacking. So yeah, that's a really good point. A really good point. And our price on Jalen Hurts with Herbert going at thirty seven, it makes me feel really good. And I mean, even uh, even Allen at. at would we 31? Like, you know, we're, we got him as QB2, but he kind of goes, you know, off and on with the two of them. Based on, I don't really know drafters' price points, but I can imagine they probably go around that two, three turn. So, you know, we got him later than normal and he's stacked. So people that kind of push him, I'm assuming are getting him stacked. All right. So I'm going to set up my spike week uh, tool here just to kind of how I like it. And if you ever mm -hmm. want to see anything, just let me know. So I like to pull up my quarterbacks schedule once I get it. So I'm really going to try to match some of these things up if they make sense. Yep. And then we also in the first column here, these are my game stacks. So like Terry McLaurin, I have three game stacks if we select him where some of these guys are zero stacked. Yep. I mean, that makes sense because Washington's going to play Philly twice. Um, I do like Terry. I like Terry. I like Judy. Um, I could even get behind Etienne, but there's a lot of tank, uh, propaganda coming out right now. You know, last night, Rob and Eric really set the bar high, talked about how zero RB is a terrible build. Five um, seconds. So I think we should try to go ahead and do one of those and see what we can come up with. I'm totally fine with that. I have plenty. I think there are plenty of zero RB candidates that um, can give you that eight to ten point, you know, weeks that you need if you're ping ponging, you know, spiked weeks with your wide receivers. 
Um, I can see all of these guys being wide receiver ones. Um, I know people will think that's a hot take with Devonta Smith. We talked about it in the Spike Week Discord earlier. Join that. Um, conversations going always. It's kind of like a 1A, 1B situation. And Devonta Smith really came on late in the year, especially Absolutely. in the Super Bowl. Absolutely. So I'm pretty excited about our start here with Cup, Devonta Smith, Jalen Hurts, and McLaurin. That's pretty sick. And now I'm feeling like, hey, let's just scoop whatever values come. That kind of makes sense on the team. We can see I have a couple player takes here and there, like uh, DJ Moore. I might have way more than the field on, but this is just kind of getting into a zone where I just like to mix and match. So I guess that's a, that's a good question that I have for you. So DJ Moore. Do you think he's more of like a spike week type player with fields, or do you think he's going to provide more of a safer floor? So why are you specifically drafting him in drafters, essentially? You just don't know. You just don't know. No. <laughs> so DJ Moore, I just really like the talent. I think he's shown different layers to his game, whether it be the short, middle, or intermediate, or even the deep game. Like he just checks a whole lot of boxes and i am not smart enough to know what chicago's offense is going to look like this year i can't forecast it so like i think there are really high upside outcomes for dj Moore, where Take DJ Moore. i don't see that with chris godwin yeah i mean the offense should theoretically be better um you know it's another step forward um it's what field's third year in the offense second year with his head coach um Theoretically, they should be passing more. I mean, I, I talked yeah. to Gretch about this, and, and Gretch brought up some good examples as to why he's not buying into this hype that they're going to throw more. Um, but they did invest pretty significantly in the offensive line. They're just a highly efficient running team, um, so they are going to lean on on their running backs. They did bring in a couple of them, so they're going to kind of cycle through. Um, the only, I'd say, downfall to that argument is they did bring in a, a wide receiver one theoretically fields should be scrambling less because he's under constant duress um, which allows his wide receivers to get open down the field i like darnell mooney i like dj Moore. i think they will get open i mean he was thrown to some bums um so that really didn't help yeah. Um, like equanimous St. Brown, not a guy that you really want on the field. Like he's probably a great dude. Like I've seen a couple things of clips with him, Amon Ra and their dad, but like, sorry, if he's on the field, we got problems. Yeah. I mean, he's not a guy you want to depend on for like 80% of snaps. So here's where I'm probably really shifting and thinking running back maybe. Oh, Pierce was a guy I was kind of considering. Been seeing a little bit more on him lately. That makes me kind of feel like Pierce might be a really good pick on drafters. Uh, I mean, he caught a lot of passes in college, and they're finally, or at least in preseason, starting to use him in the passing game. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of uh, drum beats going along that CJ Stroud's pretty damn good, um, which I've been kind of saying all along. So that should theoretically open up more rush lanes for him. Um, he doesn't have Davis Mills at quarterback. I, I think Damian Pierce is a, a really good running back, um, mm -hmm. but obviously he does go. I, I, I would have been on board yeah. for that pick. Um, I'm going to have trouble passing on George Kittle if he comes back to us here at pick 67. So here's my thing on Kittle. He's a spike week type player, right? Which I'm not sure if it truly benefits us in this type of tournament. Um, because he's basically going, he's, he's kind of a boomer bust type player, right? He does obviously provide spiked weeks, which can help, but it's less important in terms of advancing structure, right? Because we don't need to advance. It's just cumulative points. Mm -hmm. um, Where are you leaning? I, I really like Javante. So I think we can wait around on Javante. I know his ADP is a little bit higher, but this redness is scaring a lot of people. What if we went Miles okay. Sanders? I hate Miles I'll Sanders. Tell you I'd why. rather go George Me too. <laughs> okay, I took Miles Sanders' executive decision because the clock was about to run out. So if you couldn't see, I had Miles Sanders in 1% of my drafts. So this is a player that Hacker from Spike Week was at. Oh, and there goes Javante Sasari. My bad. Yeah. I really thought we could get him. 
Um, so Hacker was talking to me about Miles Sanders of he was looking at his opponent IQ. And this is a player that's not being drafted by people who draft like us if that makes sense. So pe the people who are taking Miles Sanders are never doing it as like the lead back in zero RB or your anchor mm -hmm. in like an anchor build. Like that's just not happening. So that's just a little texture that he kind of leaned me towards that. I was like, hey, I want to try to do that. And it kind of just lined up right there. That is fair enough. Um, you know, I, I definitely see that. Like he typically goes to people where with like his – Typically, their third or fourth running back. Uh, you know, I I really don't take him in zero RB or hero RB builds, um, so I should probably start mixing that in. Um, I like Pitts here. I also like James Conner and Rashad White, and I've gotten very as as gross as this is to David Montgomery. But her, I guess Goddard. What do you also, think about yeah, Goddard, Goddard for the double? Goddard makes more sense. Okay, just what bet, do you want? On, that's just a bet on the offense. Take Goddard. I think the running backs will start to come back to us. Yeah. I'm not concerned about the running backs. Like there's guys that we like that we can find through all the last rounds. Like you can just lock in generic prints if you want to in round 20. He or not Keontae. in the draft pool or can't take you. Are you concerned about Marlon Mack? No, no. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, there's guys that I think you and I can come up with that. We're going to like later on that. I'm not super concerned of skipping out there um can you read through the roster real quick absolutely so i like viewing the team uh in this mode using the spike week draft hacker so we have jalen hurts devonta smith and dallas goddard cooper cup scary terry mclaurin dj moore and miles sanders beautiful um and then pretty fun can we look at the eight hole? I see I see a lot of running backs on that team, so just kind of want to run yeah. through it. That's pretty spicy. Austin Eckler, Jonathan Taylor, Josh Jacobs, Ken, Kenny Walker, J.K. Dobbins, Waddle, and Pitts. He he's gone. He he just kind of seems like he's ADP value, like taking the ADP followers. Yeah. Um, and he, dudes at ninety eight drafts, so clearly thinks this is a good strategy and like if you stopped at five here it might be hey it takes tony a little early for me but i mean at that point you need some boom bust all right what so i kind of overread you on the last two what's jumping out for you here um Gecko is interesting because I think he's going to be the lead horse and he's going to be ready week one uh, as mm -hmm. is James Conner. I'm fine with either of them. Not truly in, excited by the wide receivers here. Okay. Well, we'll talk about a wide receiver right after I click draft on Isaiah Pacheco. What makes you not like Traylon Burks? It's not that I don't like Traylon Burks. It's just build. Right, so we have four wide receivers right now. Um, only one running back for a cumulative scoring. We need we need guys that have potential upside. Um, I think there are enough wide receivers we like a little bit later. Um, and just think structurally, it probably made sense to grab a running back. Yeah, I totally agree. If we had a couple running backs before that, I would absolutely be smashing Traylon Burks there. He's the type of guy that's like a, a big win small loss like I, I he's he's gonna provide weeks um that are really important throughout the year it's just can he do it on a more consistent basis and i think d hop actually helps him yeah so let's pull up our team this is might be a little bit better way for us to view it here on stream so we have jalen hurts miles sanders isaiah pacheco cooper cup devonta smith harry mclaurin dj moore and dallas goddard that's a fun start it was a very fun start. What do you like here, Silas? You never have to get me to, you know, get too crazy on Rashad Penny. He also stacks. Um, All right. Oh, I'll just go you don't have to <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you saw that 40% next to the name or not. I, I didn't. I didn't look too. I haven't been really been looking at your exposures. Um, just a side point. I mean, I, I also like Brian Robinson also stacks because it's the NFC East. Um also could have got behind uh, either Rashad Bateman. And I've low-key kind of been into Odell. Um, 
And I, I can I can touch on that if he's back at our next pick. I think it's a little spicy. A little spicy, yes, but interesting. I'll just I'll, I'll bring it up once he's picked. All right, sounds good. I'm gonna play around with the drafters. Lovely scroll bars here, so we can keep seeing everything we want to. We haven't done a ton of stacking up Hertz schedule here, but I think things have just been lining up that the picks have been pretty clear and obvious. We haven't really needed to go to that tiebreaker yet. And not even that, but the way the Eagles played at least last year was they blew everybody out in the first half, scored all their points, and then basically rested. So, like, you know, you are going to get significant negative game scripts, but the teams are playing against a pretty damn good defense should still maintain to be a pretty good defense. Um, the, the Their pass defense took a little bit of a hit, um, mm-hmm. but it's not – I mean, they're still in their Super Bowl window, so, like, they're going for it. They literally want to just blow teams out of the water. Um, teams really didn't have a lot of success against them. All right, so we're in a one three four one coming up here in a second. Okay, so I see that Odell went – my spicy take on Odell is mm-hmm. it's not really that spicy, but I've been heating up to Odell because everybody says the Baltimore passing offense is going to be great this year. Everybody agrees with it. Everybody's saying it, but everybody says that Odell Beckham is overvalued old. He can't do it anymore. I mean, they gave the man 16, what, $17 million. Something like that. <laughs> He's going to provide spike weeks. He still can beat single coverage. Um, All right. There's nothing here that I'm super loving. What about you? Um, I like Damian Harris, but I think we should do a wide receiver here. I honestly really like Juju. It's really gross. All right. We can do Juju Smith-Schuster. Um, I don't he, have a ton, but I don't mind stepping out of my comfort zone, especially when this kind of goes back to that Miles Sanders point earlier. Not a lot of folks that think like us are taking Juju. So is Juju a little bit more unique in this type of build or something like that? Something to consider. I mean, he should be the wide receiver one. Um, There are positive reports coming out um, from Patriots camp on Juju. He does pair with Hertz because they play week one. Um, So there is some positive correlation there. That offense should be a little bit better because they brought in Bill O'Brien and are not running uh, (laughs) with a, Patricia and the, as the offensive coordinator who had never you know, called a game before. I mean, Patricia can't call defense. What made them think he could call offense? No idea. Um, and it's all you hear on sports radio. But theoretically, they should take a step forward. Um, he's kind of going to play that Julian Edelman type role where he's kind of like an X slash slot. Um, so should see some open looks over the middle, which is what he's really good at. And he's pretty good after the catch. But going back to Odell, so that offense is really freaking good. Everybody agrees it's really going to be good. And the way Todd Monken wants to play is through the seams and stretching the field. Odell Beckham in single coverage, downfield, sign me up, all right? Like, yes, he's old, and yes, he might get hurt, but he's going to provide enough spiked weeks where it's not going to hurt you, right? He's a 10th, 11th, you know, 9, 10, 11 round pick. You know, he's going to give you three, four, five weeks during the year. He's going to be heavily utilized in the red zone. Um, Other than, you know, Mark Andrews, they don't really have a red zone threat. And that is what they brought him in to do. All right. Two guys jumping out at me. Anthony Richardson, uh, about two rounds after ADP, and then Dalton Kincaid. I know you like I was going to say Richardson or uh, Tank Bigsby. I, I prefer Richardson, though. Yeah, I feel like I that's a pretty that, unique pairing. Yeah, I like that. If we are going to make that two QB build, he's somebody who I think plays off hurts well enough to make it worth one of our roster spots. And Kincaid snap goes immediately after. I'm going to drop Bigsby in the queue because I am a very big Tank Bigsby fan. I, I, the drum beat. So I saw him break like a, it was like a 40, 50 yard run uh, on in practice today. The drum beat just keeps getting larger. I mean, he, they already said he's going to be utilized for goal line work. Um, and now, obviously, you know, he, they actually used him in the screen game. So 
we know Travis Etienne has brick for hands, even though people think he's good at, you know, <laughs> we, Eric already talked about it. Even though they people think that Travis Etienne is good at pass catching, like he really isn't. Yeah. And Tank Bigsby is. Yeah. And I mean, that type of ambiguous situation where, I mean, we can look at draft capital and things like that, but like, I don't think Etienne did enough last year just to be like, oh man, he's clear number one and it's going to stay that way for 17 weeks. Like, he I think it's ambiguous. Fantasy, but they, they literally gave him all the run and like he wasn't very efficient. Yeah. Yeah. He did and that's why volume. I'm, that's why I was actually curious before the draft. Like, are they going to add somebody? or even in free agency. And then they added Bigsby and like, I don't even know mu that much about take Bigsby. I've looked up a few things and sell, so he catches balls and he's a pretty big dude, but like anybody in that spot could have value. And it yeah. looks like it went over here to King Coakley. I just saw that he's over there taking our guys. God Shit. damn you, Rob. Yeah. That really makes me mad. Cause I was really going to be pushing for Gallup here. Yeah, and Gallup had a ton of correlation with our roster. Yep. Um, um, I also like Algier. Um, and I, that's I like exactly the Giants guys leaders. So not uh, Hodgins. Algier was exactly the guy I was going to push to you. See if you wanted. Like I have a little bit too much Eli Mitchell probably. So, and I think I had 18% Algier. I'm fine evening those guys out some. I, I mean, in, in Eli's already hurt, right? Could be hurt to start the year, which would be very bad in drafters land. Algier, maybe, you know, they did just draft someone at four overall, so not going to have a significant workload, but he's not going to not have a workload, right? Like they're going to utilize him. Like they used, they, I mean, they used bums last year when Algier was getting 20, 25 plus carries a game. Um, they're highly efficient. They have one of the best lines in football. I've been smashing him on pretty much every site. Yeah, I think he makes a lot of sense for what we're trying to do here for this build and this contest. And we're coming in at a 2 4 5 1. One thing that I will mention, just knowing the drafters' landscape, some guys like Ford don't slide as much as you think they will on other sites. So I really like Alec Pierce as you know, the really deep threat for Anthony Richardson, who has a cannon, or Marvin Mims, who has pretty much a dead set role or lock on that wide receiver three role. I'll yeah. let you choose I, number one. I like both of them a lot. I'm just going to break the tie for correlation. Yep. Schedule-wise, Mims did have more correlation, but stacking purposes, obviously. Yeah, and... I don't think we'll add any other indie pieces probably on this team. See us taking like a late 19th, 20th round Jelani if we really wanted to. Yeah, that's fair. All right. So right now we are at a 2 4 6 1, looking at Jalen Hurts and Anthony Richardson, most likely the most athletic QB combo known to man. Miles Sanders, Isaiah Pacheco, Rashad Penny, and Tyler Algier at running back. Cooper Cup, Devonta Smith, Terry McLaurin, DJ Moore, Juju Smith-Schuster, and Alec Pierce at wide receiver, and Dallas Goddard as our lone tight end. Yeah, I mean, we're basically making a bet on the Eagles' offense, <laughs> there, and we know they're going to be good. So, like, you know, I, I feel pretty good about our roster so far. Yeah, I mean, that'd be a sick bet to make if it was 2022, but I think it'd also be good here in 2023. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't see them taking really a step back. <laughs> if anything, they're going to be better this year. So here's something my sick brain was thinking about the other day. So in the NFL, there's a whole lot of discussion like, hey, should they get rid of the quarterback sneak where everybody gets behind them and pushes them? The butt push or whatever you want to call it. Well, the NFL didn't eliminate that from the rulebook this offseason. And it was highly successful, especially with Hertz last year. And that's one of the things that I've been thinking about with Penny a little bit of maybe defenses start loading up the A gaps right across the line of scrimmage from the quarterback and really shutting down and going, Jalen Hurts, you are not going one yard forward. You're going to have to run the ball, throw the ball, something else. You're not 
QB sneaking it in this year? Like, how are defensive coordinators going to adjust? Is I mean, kind I don't of what's going on yeah, in my head. I don't think they can. It's pretty much an indefensible play. However, if teams are really crowding like the the a gaps they might just pitch it to penny and let him literally run over <laughs> yeah corner. hey penny penny and swift <laughs> go and beat one guy to the corner like i like those bets um so we're on the clock i really like jerome ford um and i also really like raheem moster um, i also like the cool. foreman all right i'm cool with ford or moster maybe foreman on the way back uh any play on the maybe ford uh, Moster has more connections, but we're going to run out of okay, time. Let's do that. There you go. Oh. And ooh, I didn't get the click in time. Very click tight window here. Uh, and we got a guy that I put in my queue for later. Let's see how much ahead of AG, ADP we just took Jalen Hyatt. I really don't hate it, though. Uh, I mean, the drum beat's well, really rolling for Hyatt. He's a downfield threat type of player. Theoretically, he could win the job in camp. Yeah. I added him in when you said, we want a giant, but not Hodgins. <laughs> I was more thinking Slayton, but. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, yeah, I think this, yeah. I'm assuming Slayton goes in the like 18th, 19th round here as well, um, just like he yeah. does on Underdog. He's the guy that I pretty much can pencil in as a, a for sure starter. Um Hyatt is it like I you can't get me to talk bad about Hyatt. The guy is uber talented, obviously played in Tennessee, has to learn a new system. However, he's turning heads. And typically, mm -hmm. you know, you just kind of have to read into the fact that every beat writer is like, this kid can play. And that wide receiver core is not very talented. So if this kid can play, Dayball is gonna find ways to generate touches for him. Yeah, especially with our other other wide receivers, I don't necessarily want a safe play on the roster. So I got to filter just a running back here. Anything jumping out at you? There's kind of one guy that's screaming to me. Yep. So same as last round where I was taking Moster, I would go Jeff Wilson. The opposing All right, guy let's do that. And I'm, I'm going to actually click the button this time in time. <laughs> there we go. Welcome to the squad, Jeff Wilson Jr. I think he makes perfect sense for this type of build. Um, you know, I, I don't expect Miami to actually sign Dalvin Cook. If they do, it's a bad idea. Um, I really do like Devon A. Chain, but Mike McDaniel has been known to cycle through his running backs. I mean, he used both Moster and Jeff Wilson. Um, and A. Chain's kind of like a Mostert, you know, clone. Mostert's 31, he's getting up there in age. Jeff Wilson could still be the goal line back this year on an offense that we think is going to be pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I'm looking at we might need to be a little concerned about is we have a lot of week 10 buys. Yeah, we should probably try to avoid that going forward. Should Something I'm typically look... not worried about, but in drafters, I think you have to be. Yeah, I think we should take a look and see kind of what's going on on the landscape here. So I'm just going to do a quick run through. So we got a 2643, 2571, 2571, 4452. Let's take a look at that. That is. I think that's four quarterbacks that you would do it with. <laughs> I don't know if I would do it, but like those are four kind of sketchy quarterbacks that, you know, there's injury concerns with Stafford. Brock Purdy's already hurt and might not actually be the starter. Tua has significant injury concerns. The only one that's pretty much guaranteed or, you know, quote unquote guaranteed to play 16 games is Jared Goff. Yeah. And he's not guaranteed. He's just one injury away from Teddy Bridgewater, Bridgewater coming in to save the day. And they're all, all stacked. It's interesting. I just don't know if I would do it. Gus is interesting. Um, let's look at... I'm not really looking at a tight end. Can you click on wide receiver real quick? Nothing really stands up. Do you have any any leans? Um, I'm not a huge Gus guy, but I'm also really out of stuff right now. How, so about, Zemir? Say, say How about Zemir? Zemir, yeah. 
seven week correlations, Josh Jacobs could potentially hold out. And he's, mm-hmm. I think he's the clear backup from what I've been hearing. When we get to this, this type of area of the draft, I really like to come over and look at number of game stacks by week. And I'm kind of ideally trying to get, and this is very arbitrary, uh, multiple weeks with four game stacks. And that's really how I'm playing that is a lot by using the number Mm -hmm. of games that they stack with. So it looks like we really like Saints. Um, So I'm looking at Juwan and he has eight game stacks. And then Jets have nine. So interesting one to consider, Corey Davis. Corey Davis, okay. Um, If we need him, I don't know if we need him. (laughs) Guy for the back of our brain, Justice Hill, if we need somebody late. Just putting that out there so I don't forget. Is he still in Baltimore? He is, and he played the most number of third downs for them last year I saw today. With J.K. Dobbins being hurt most of the year. Yes, that is <laughs> factually correct, but it's still interesting nonetheless for a 20th round pick. It is. All right, so we are back on the clock. The running back kind of seems flat. No one really stands out to me. Don't know if anyone stands out to you. Yeah, is there a tight end that you're just like, hey, we want a guy that doesn't I mean, have... I, I really like Juwan Johnson. I, I do. All right. I'm just going to click it. And I was trying to get over to see when Dallas Goddard's buy was, and I was Ten. a silly rabbit, and I could have just Week scrolled 10. up. Week 10. All right. So that works out fine. Yep. I'm not opposed to another tight end in this build either with how late we got Johnson. I 100% agree. Um, and the one reason why I like Juwan Johnson, I know there's – they obviously have Taysom Hill, who's technically a tight end, and they kind of use all over the field. Um, they just signed Jimmy Graham and Adam Troutman this offseason, which kind of shows that they don't love Juwan Johnson. But the man was pretty damn good last year and is a pretty significant red zone target. If we think that offense, like I, Spike Week has been saying, like we think that offense is going to take a step forward with Derek Carr, why would they not have more red zone chances? Why would Juwan Johnson not have more red zone targets like he he's one of those guys that i think could score 10 to 12 touchdowns and just everyone's like what how did, where'd that come from and it, like the stats and like the underlying numbers were right in front of our faces the entire time yeah absolutely and like if foster moreau Taysom hill and jimmy graham are scaring you off like those aren't exactly world beaters i mean uh-huh. foster moreau is coming back from cancer jimmy graham hasn't <laughs> been in the league in two years Right. A quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> we are looking at Jalen Hurts, Anthony Richardson, Miles Sanders, Pacheco, Penny, Algier, Wilson, White, and we'll keep going later. Uh, I'm, I'm going to let you take the reins on this pick because I don't really have a strong lean. All right. Um, I'm going to look at wide receiver. I like Claypool here. Yep. Don't have to convince me. I convinced all of you on the 555 stream, which we never yeah. talked about. <laughs> um, so the reason I'm at the clay pool there is it's kind of just doubling down a little bit on our DJ Moore bet earlier of saying, hey, you know, the market doesn't think this offense is going to pass. But if it does, which it might not, but if it does and they really hit the accelerator on the passing game, we probably have their two biggest red zone targets at wide receiver. Yep. I mean, they spent basically a first round pick on Chase Claypool. Um, He basically said that he never really understood the playbook last year. Um, We see historically that people traded in the NFL mid year, like at the trade deadline, don't typically like show off or show out for teams, give him a full off season. I know there's some red flags for character issues, but let him kind of figure out the playbook this year, start full steam. They obviously upgraded the offensive line, have more time to throw deep to him. Uh, and he should see single coverage with the acquisition of DJ Moore. All right. 
So at this stage, I think we can just throw ADP out the window. Any deep guys that you're just like into? Isaiah Spiller. Oh, interesting. That was not a name I planned to hear when Ann's asking that question. <laughs> All right. Let's take some Isaiah Spiller. Now, I'm going to need you to rationalize this after I click this button. Absolutely. Why Happy did we to. just click Isaiah Spiller? So we're a little weak at running back. Um, you know, we kind of a little bit behind the eight ball. So I think we're pretty, pretty set at wide receiver. We might want to grab another one in the 20th round. I think Isaiah Spiller, you know, he got hurt last year in training camp, never really had a full season under his legs, uh, had a piss poor combine. Eckler's another year older. They obviously use him a crap ton. Add Isaiah Spiller as that kind of guy that has breakaway speed into a Kellen Moore offense. I think he's going to outbeat just a guy, Joshua Kelly, for the backup role. Um, and we might actually see him break out towards the second half of the year. Okay, so I love, love, love heading after the Chargers second running back. I've been dipping my toes in the exact opposite direction. So that is a check my bias. It's an R19, R20 guy. Like, I don't know. I'm not smart enough to know whether, and no one is. Like, the coaches probably don't know. Eric says that quite frequently. We don't know. Like, so I think mixing Spiller in is good. I think mixing in Kelly is good too. Um, some interesting things with Kelly. He was actually quoted recently that Kellen Moore uh, has like been expanding the other running backs. And I think this would include Spiller as well, but their route trees where mm -hmm. previously under Joe Lombardi, the guys not named Eckler weren't asked to do anything besides block, but now they're working on choice routes and things like that. He was saying, so that makes me really interested in those guys. Yep. Absolutely. Um, let's go over to tight end. Cause I think we're going to grab a tight end here tight end or Quez Watkins? Uh, I'd rather Olamide Zacchaeus if if we want uh, another Eagles guy. All right. Let's not do that then. <laughs> um, Bellinger's a little... Well, let's just grab Jelani Woods. Yeah, I think that's a good plan. I like it. <laughs> Even though he has the same bye week as um, Juwan Johnson, he opposite Dallas Goddard. So it's not like we have all of our tight ends at week 10 bye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so... The only reason I hedged away from the Zacchaeus is I was taking a lot of Zacchaeus if I needed to just throw in an eagle late. But some of the stuff I've been reading is it's pretty clear Quez is still the number three. After Today, the start of camp. Zacchaeus got a 45-yard bomb from Jalen Hurts. Darn beat writers. <laughs> yeah, so like, you know, we can only know what we know, right? <laughs> He, uh, and Jalen Hurts only threw five passes in 11 on 11, and he ended it with a 45 yard bomb to Old Meads Keys. So, yeah, boy. those teams I already have on will be great. All right, so let's run through this team <laughs> quarterback. We have Jalen Hurts and Anthony Richardson, running back Miles Sanders, gross, Isaiah Pacheco, Rashad Penny, Tyler Algier, Jeff Wilson Jr., Zamir White. Isaiah Spiller, wide receiver, Cooper Cup, Devonta Smith, Terry McLaurin, DJ Moore, Juju Smith-Schuster, Alec Pierce, Jalen Hyatt, and Chase Claypool. And at tight end, rounded out with three, Dallas Goddard, Jawan Johnson, and Jelani Woods. I like it. Um, you know, I think it, if, if it could get behind the eight ball at running back, um, just because of this format, you obviously need to kind of produce really early on. This is typically a, a team that would look a hell of a lot better on DraftKings. Um, mm -hmm. But if we can get early production from Sanders and Pacheco and, you know, potentially Penny, and then we can wait on the other guys, like this team could be scary come, you know, the, the actual weeks that propel you up the leaderboard. Yeah, I think that's a really good point of like, hey, we just need these guys to hold out for a little bit until one or two of these guys break out of their backfields. Um, really interesting, too. The uh, regular season winner for BBM last year, it was a zero RB build. So, like, could it work? Yeah, absolutely. And I think we picked out a group of players that have that nice kind of different archetype texture that they could definitely be championship winning. Yeah, looking forward to it. Looking forward to being a hundred and fifty thousand dollar richer. Uh, any last uh, comments? 
no, I just had a ton of fun and everybody out there should give drafters a try. They have a great promo going this month. It's time to fill out those lobbies. Promo code spike for a hundred percent deposit match, uh, overlay on overlay in their $20 contest that we just drafted. Uh, get in there before it's too late for us. It's spike week. Peace. Those were some spicy takes. Want to stay up to date with all of the other spicy takes we're going to have over here at Spike Week? Why don't you press that subscribe button below? You turn notifications on, we draft a team, boom, you know about it. We have another spicy take, boom, you know about it. You can be there. You can draft with us. You want to stay up to date? That's how you do it. All right, we'll catch you later next time here at Spike Week. Spike Week.